Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and I need a bigger micro SD card for my Switch. My current one, it's only 400 gigabytes, which, okay, that's not super small, but I've got a lot of flipping games. I need something bigger. But I don't want to have to pay those outrageous mainstream prices. Have you seen them? It could be like nearly £100 for a terabyte. But according to Amazon, I don't have to. I just type in one terabyte micro SD card and God, would you look at that? There's one there for only £19. And it's sponsored to boot, which means that Amazon has taken money from the company selling it in order to advertise it on their search results and put it nice and high up, which means they must have vetted it, they must have bought it and tested it and made sure, yeah, this is the real deal. Let's have a quick look at the page to make sure it's exactly what I want. And oh, yeah, I love the fact that it's got the speed I need. Better still, it's got wide compatibility, which I can only assume means it gets slightly larger when you place it on a MacBook's keyboard, which is a feature I'm desperate for. Let's be savvy about this, though, because you can never be too careful. Let's have a look at the other reviews and ratings from other customers. And uh, oh, yeah, it was a pretty good score, absolutely. Oh, and you know it's got to be good because someone's put it in their boblov. Okay, I just need to order it. And there we go. It's on its way to me now. <laughs> Talk about same day delivery. Okay, let's drop the nonsense. I bought this card for one reason and one reason alone. And it's a flipping important one because I knew just by looking at it that it was a fake. Fake micro SD cards are a big problem and they've been a big problem for a big long time and that problem's only getting bigger. Now, if you're not especially tech savvy or you're just not familiar with this particular scam, then you might be thinking, how can a micro SD card be fake? And if you are tech savvy and you already know the answer to all this, thanks for watching the video anyway. And for the price, you might be tempted to just take a chance and you sort of think, oh, I'll just buy it and you know, I'll plug it into my device and if it comes up and it says it's smaller or something like that, or it just doesn't work, I'll, I'll just return it. And yeah, that would be a reasonable thing to do, but unfortunately, this is a little bit more insidious than that. Because any device you plug this into has a tiny case of the stupids and it doesn't actually know how big this card is or indeed any card that you plug in. Same with hard drives, any storage medium. Instead, the device relies on the card to say how big it is. It, it, it works a bit like this. Hello? I'm in. How big? Eight. I believe you. And that means if it was manufactured to do so, a fake card can simply lie. Hello? I'm in. How big? A thousand? I believe you. <laughs> and so simply buying a card and plugging it in isn't enough to test it. We have to be a little more rigorous than that. I don't know why I rolled the R on little. And so in order to put my money where my mouth is, or rather my time where my mouth is, I ran a test using a piece of software that I can never remember the name of. It's <laughs> it's H2 Test W. Snazzy. This is a bit of software that's been around for ages, and what it does is it dumps a load of data onto a storage medium, you know, be it hard drive, micro SD card, whatever, and it knows exactly what it's put on there. And then, after it's put a load of stuff on there, and it really recommends you fill up the card, but when it's a terabyte and it transfers at like 24 megabytes a second, that's too long. But regardless, it then reads it back and it knows what it's looking for. And if it doesn't match up exactly, it knows it's not the real McCoy. I hedged my bets with this card and assumed it would be under 100 gigabytes. Of course, it was possible that it was over, but I thought, you know, I'd just go with 100 gigabytes and that took a long time. <laughs> As you can probably see from this delightfully slow footage. Um, let, I, I didn't capture all of this because it was literally hours. But after it had written 100 gigabytes, it then started verifying that 100 gigabytes and yeah, it failed. It failed at around about the 58 gigabyte mark, which you may go, what's a 58 gigabyte card? No, in reality, this is a 64 gigabyte card. You always lose a little bit to formatting and things like that. It's just unavoidable. So I paid 19 pounds for a 64 gigabyte card. And you might think, oh, well, at least you got a card out of it, 64 gigabytes. It's not gonna be a big deal, is it? Just wanted to nip in something I wanted to mention but completely forgot to in the main recording. Uh, that is a very high price for a 64 gig card. You can spend less and get double that. So even then it's not worth it. The problem is, is that everything that this plugs into thinks it's larger. And that's a real problem. You see, you could just treat this as a 64 gigabyte card and yeah, in theory, it would continue to work and it, well, unless it broke, which to be honest, 
the quality control on these things isn't great. But because it thinks it's bigger, the device is always going to try and put more data on there. And even if you have all the control in the world, you know, you sort of, oh, I won't even put any more than 50 gigabytes on there. Well, I'm afraid to say that a lot of systems, including macOS is a particularly strong contender for this, they dump a load of garbage files on there as well, which can fill up more space. It never sort of treats it as though that space is unavailable, and it'll always tell you that that space is free, but it's on there. It's for things like indexing and stuff like that. It's not useless information, but it does take up more space. And when the microSD card no longer has enough space, but the device it's plugged into thinks that there's still plenty of space on there, it just sort of goes, uh, okay, and it just starts overwriting old data. So your previous data will be gone. And due to the way the microSD cards and other forms of storage work, it's all non-sequential. So you're not just going to start losing the old data, like the oldest data, and you'll have this sort of shifting bit of data. No, it's going to be picking bits and pieces out. And that's a problem, because that means anything you've got stored on there will start losing bits of data, little chunks here and there, you know, sort of, you know, if it's a game, then maybe it'll start taking part of a texture, and it won't take, like, whole files, it'll just take chunks of data out, which means you could lose half a texture, which means the whole texture thing is broken and corrupted, and, I don't know, some code or something, yeah, I'm just giving you random examples, because at the end of the day, I, I'm not an expert. <laughs> but the point is, is that the data you have on there will become corrupted and will become useless. Now, admittedly, for something like the Nintendo Switch, it's not the end of the world because all you're going to really have on there is, you know, you're going to have your games, which will just stop working, you know, through and through. They'll either just not boot or they'll run into crashes way more often. You know, still not good, but not the end of the world. But the problem is, is that people use micro SD cards for all sorts of things, including things like, you know, important photos and videos and memories. And if they get corrupted and you don't have a backup, you've lost those things forever. And that's really sad. I got in contact with Amazon and I, it took me ages to get through to an actual person. And they were very helpful, although very slow because they were probably dealing with about 16 different people at once. So, you know, I explained it. They understood it. They said that they are going to log it. I reported it separately as well, and they gave me a refund without having to send this thing back, which that's about the least they could do. <laughs> but as of recording, it's still available on Amazon. They're still touting it. It's still sponsored. They're still taking money in order to host this blatantly fake card. And it's honestly disgusting because a lot of people will buy this card and they will just plug it in and it'll say a terabyte and they'll go, oh, great, I'll never have to worry about it again. But then they'll be filling it up slowly, maybe so slowly that then suddenly it starts corrupting their data. And by that point, it's too late. It's too late. They've been scammed. But there are steps you can take to avoid this. Number one, Go with a name brand, a brand you recognize, something like SanDisk or Samsung, you know? They're more expensive, but there's a good reason for that. It's because they're real. Number two, and this kind of links to number one again, what's the price like? If it's too cheap, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. These things, if they're big, they're expensive. That's just the way that it is. The price of storage has come down tremendously over the years. It always does and it always will do. But even so, 19 pounds, is ridiculously cheap for a terabyte. And in reality, when you get a 64 gig card like this, you're only actually getting 6.5% of the storage you've paid for. Well, you haven't paid for, but you've been promised. And lastly, check who you are actually buying from. Just because it's on Amazon, and just because, you know, oh, it's got two day delivery or next day delivery, depending on where you live, doesn't mean it's being sold by Amazon. The way that Amazon operates these days means that they encourage companies that sell through Amazon, through the Amazon marketplace, to stock their stock in Amazon's own warehouses, even though it is a marketplace item and it is not Amazon's own stock. So they handle distribution and everything like that, and they can get a bigger cut. If you're looking on Amazon, you can see the sold by section, and that will give you another clue as to who you're actually buying from. But to be brutally honest, I would argue that a, a sort of reputable company within your country, for example, somewhere like in the UK, I would suggest somewhere like Argos or uh, Curry's, you know, so, somewhere like that that actually has brick and mortar presence, they are likely to be selling things at pretty much the same price, maybe a little bit more, 
but you know you're getting the real thing. Unfortunately, if you live in North America, you're going to have to be even more careful, because I have read reports of fake cards turning up even in places like Walmart, which is kind of disgusting. And so if you're in any doubt at all, the final thing you can do is you can buy the card and you can put it through its paces. You can check it. You can use something like H2 Test W. That's the one. And there are various others out there as well that will do the same thing. You can also do your own testing if you like. One thing that you can do is you can load it up with as many files as possible whilst watching a video from the SD card. And then, you know, if the video starts to degrade, you know that it is uh, it is rewriting over the top. So that is one test you can do as well. But it, there's, there's no quick way. Unfortunately, there's no quick way. You have to go through these horrible slow processes because these manufacturers they just want your money. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then please, please do anything you can to stamp out this horrible practice. Buy real cards, report fake ones. We'll make the world a better place. Doubly so if you subscribe. <laughs> and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh.